If you're selling arts and crafts online, what are those trends for spring and summer 2021? I've looked into this and I'm going to help you, hopefully with some ideas for what you should be selling. So today what I'm going to do is dig deep into the trend guide that Etsy's just released and share some of my information I've been seeing with the trends from other crafty places to hopefully combine it all together and give you some ideas of what might be hot in spring and summer 2021. Now before I get started I just want to say that of course these trends don't work for every shop. I'm not advising that you dive right in and change your entire shop just based on trends. It's really difficult to have a shop that just follows the trends and jumps from season to season. However knowing what the trends are might give you some little ideas of things you can change. Photography styles you can adapt to look more trendy for the season so you might be more shareable on social media or ideas of little ranges you can pivot just to fit in with the new styles. And for the quick TLDR, before I dive deeply into this, I just want to give my first impressions of what the trends are going to be. And my feeling for this is it's 70s. It's hippie commune 70s type stuff. Floaty fabric, self-sufficiency outside, cottage core is still a thing. And I'm going to say it, this year's mermaid galaxy see whatever else it's going to be butterflies let's dig in deeper to some of the trends and see what you can potentially do about them so the first big trend that is always a big trend at this time of year is spring cleaning. People after being shut up in their houses and let's face it more so this year they want to freshen their house. So anything to do with cleaning, organizing and refreshing is a big thing. And think of ways that people can DIY improve their house. Make use of the space they've got especially with clever storage and room dividers because people are still having to make their house perform many more functions. Working from home is still like to be a thing for many people and even homeschooling to some extent in some countries. So being able to subdivide your space into a work environment, into a creative environment, into a hobby environment. So anything that makes one area look different from another is going to be a good thing. And just small changes, updates to new pillows, new colours, just something to freshen up. And spring always outdoors in, bringing some stuff inside, bringing some of those new flowers inside. And April is Earth Month, so anything earthy, anything helping Mother Nature, anything going back to our roots and enjoying the outside can be a cool touch. It's also the time to start planting for many people outside and indoors. So anything that can help with that. Tutorials, ideas, planters, decorations, mushrooms are a really big trend in decor. So little pottery mushrooms. I even spoke about mushroom earrings before I knew it was going to hit and be a huge trend for this year. And in with that outdoor feel, parties and people meeting up with people, socialising is hopefully going to be increasing but many people are a little wary of inside so when the weather gets better, outdoor spaces, catching up on birthdays and also a big trend that's looking like coming in weddings is for people having those weddings that they've missed but smaller wedding parties. So what this actually means is all of the individual elements, that it can be a bigger budget because there's less people, so each individual thing's a bigger budget. But what we're hearing as well, because there's less people being invited to the wedding, a lot of the stuff, the bride, the family, everyone is going to be doing it themselves to an extent, so making their own invites. So this might be the time to look into if you're a shop that does wedding stationery or this type of thing. Can you make kits? Can you make templates for people to make their own wedding stationery rather than making the wedding stationery for them? Another trend as well as the 70s that I've mentioned is a kind of fancy Regency thing. Tea parties, lace gloves, little bits of lace, little touches of luxury. Again, all in this trend. So a, a Regency wedding type thing. Um, it's all in this kind of trend of less is more, little bits of luxury instead of massive loads of everything, little bits of something lovely. And travel. People are looking for their summer holidays but it's more likely to be a staycation or in your own country. So travel ideas for people, things to 
things to bring the rest of the world into your home or ideas for local things to do to explore your own neighbourhood. And always in spring, beachy ideas are in trees, fresh air, and Etsy even brought up its own colour of the year this year, which is a lovely sky blue colour, a lovely fresh blue. So definitely open air, hope, spring. It's a great season and hopefully that gives you loads of ideas. Gifting is still likely to remain huge. Small thoughtful gifts, catching up on people's birthdays. Again, people aren't necessarily going to be able to get together like they used to to, used to, to celebrate. So they're going to want to send personalised nice things for the person rather than massive amounts of consumerism, rather than buying loads of rubbish. They're going to want to buy small smaller thoughtful gifts, personalised gifts. And thinking of you, missed celebrations, self-care, little gifts for your best friend, all these little extra touches. People just want to make someone else's day. And as well as the gifting, self-care, so there's quite a lot of the home spa thing as kits, as gifts for other people and as things for yourself. A really popular trend for the bathroom type decor is checkered print. I've seen lots of checkered towels and face cloths and all sorts of fun things. That's just a little accent that can modernise and bring up to date that room. And as well as the blue colours, Etsy are predicting citrus colours and daisy patterns, bright bold geographic patterns and squiggles are likely to be popular. Another big thing that's really taking off is imagination and play. In the UK and Germany, apparently mud kitchens are becoming more of a thing. I hadn't heard of this till a couple of years ago. I was walking in the woods, middle of nowhere, so I thought, and was totally freaked out by some kitchen stuff there. Apparently it was a local nursery had made a mud kitchen. It's for use in your imagination. There's little kettles and spatulas and all sorts of things, and you play make food outside in the woodlands. It's kind of cute. So lots of kits, finger painting, getting in there, getting messy, letting kids be kids, but also learning things, abstract art. Abstract art is big for kids and pottery making or painting, kits to paint on ready-made pottery and climbing frames, jungle gyms, all these sort of things are still big. So anything that can get kids outside using their imagination. It's been a tough year for kids. So fun being kids, getting mucky and talking Talking of this 70s style, sustainability is still huge. So everything that helps people reuse and recycle. Big thing is vintage bags or bags made out of reusable things to go shopping and not use plastic bags. So that bag that you take everywhere to get your shopping in. The vintage style also follows into clothing. People have been in sweatpants for a year. They want to not be in sweat patterns. They want to dress up a little bit more, but the stuffy office attire of old, we're not quite ready for that. I don't think many of our bodies fit back into that structured clothing. So a little more floaty, a little more boxy styles, but maybe in slightly nicer material. Jeans are back. Denim is back because that's like the step between sweatpants to office pants, you've got jeans in the middle. It's a step towards wearing structured clothes again. Linen is also big this spring and summer. And a big predicted trend is the 70s sunglasses. So if you've got any vintage sunglasses lying about, this could well be the season. In that boxy shape, I've been seeing so many of my friends just now buying overalls and jumpsuits, those fun one piece romper clothes for adults and taking into account those big, bold, geometric shapes, sunflowers, bright squiggles, all these can totally be used in the, I have to admit, great fun looking jumpsuits. And knitwear jumpers are still popular because people are likely to be outside more. So they want some nice, pretty, luxury, good fabrics to cover up in when it gets a little bit cold. And mixing that sort of 70s style with the Regency stuff, it's actually a term, a Regency core. <laughs> um, but you can imagine the floaty fabrics of laces and linens. This is likely to be a real popular trend and cottage core is still big. So Regency core with cottage core, floaty lace beautifulness and fairies at the bottom of the garden. And it's always been a general trend after historically difficult times, people come
come out with fun, bright colors. People are wanting to celebrate when they get outside and I can't see this year being any different from that. When times are hard, people dress up. <laughs> Very, and very much personalization. Whatever you're making, if you can make it personalized to the person or the recipient, then that means these items are not just mass manufactured. They're made by the one craftsperson for the one person. So people are, let's face it, if you've been sitting in the, on the couch in your same pair of sweatpants for an entire year, when you're buying clothes, you don't need to buy the fast fashion anymore. One or two decent pieces of clothes instead of hundreds of cheap rubbish. So people are looking for that stuff that's made just for them, paying a little more for some quality and paying a little more for something a bit different. If you're looking at jewellery, and I know we have a lot of jewellery sellers here, those big bold statement pieces are still in. That was a huge 70s trend anyway, but still a lot of us are on Zoom calls and everything. So those tiny little cute dainty things get lost. They get lost in the big flowing fabrics. They get lost in your old decor behind you, a big statement piece, especially something that's handmade, handcrafted or different from everybody else. So knowing these trends, what can we do about it? As I already said at the beginning, you don't want to sort of cancel everything that's in your shop just now to ju jump onto the new trends, but you can use these ideas a little bit to get a bit more notice in your shop potentially. If you get a lot of following on social media, something that can be good is to think about how you're taking your new photographs. I've heard of people that have an area, a corner, a wall in a section of a room that they decorate up just for their photographs. So if you've got an area that could that you could use, think about how you're going to decorate that. Move in a chair or a book, bit of a bookcase or something that's just in that style. Paint that small section, a colour that fits in with the theme, and then pop your objects in it. This is also teaching people how they can use what you make to fit in with the theme of the trends of just now. And if your images are on trend, they're more likely to be picked up and shared by big bloggers or places like Etsy because they want to stay on trend and they want their social media to look like the trend. If you're a crafter with a popular or unique craft, there's chances are you've got lots of extras lying about the place. So with kids just about to be off school again and parents at their wits end, craft kits. Can you make kits to help keep these kids entertained? Especially the kind of hand-on kits, decorating ceramics, things like this, something where the kids get messy. Or if you don't want to focus on aiming for kids, also what kits can you make for the adults? Things that they could perhaps start a business with, learn a new craft, or a bit of quiet mindfulness, colouring in, things like these repetitive things of these simple repetitive crafts are still very popular just now as people need a little bit of an escape from reality. You could even start up craft kits. Plenty of places are doing this. Not only can you sell the kits, sell the pattern or sell the PDF, you can also get together in a group meeting or run videos or write blog posts that people do a specific activity every week. You're selling the items for the activity and you're guiding along your community in doing the activity. That kind of structured thing helps people be crafty without having to think about how they're going to be crafty. People really love some kind of art course, so you could set up a course that Every day you learn a different bit of the craft, you learn a different bit of the skill and at the end of the week or at the end of the fortnight you've created a work of art. Other mindful crafts are things like embroidery and watercolour. These are still very popular. Other crafts that are super popular just now, punch needle rug things, sewing kits and one thing that is huge just now if you can't and how many crafters out there don't have extra crafts lying about the place? A giant box of crafts, thing that has different little projects for people to try super popular just now. Scrapbooking is popular and you don't necessarily just have to sell things for scrapbooking. Can you inspire people with ideas? Can you make, for example, stamps or digital stamps with 
the forest fairies theme, with the mushrooms, with the floaty fabrics, with the Regency core. And resin is popular. People are wanting to get into that wonderful craft where you can create all sorts of things. So resin kits, but also embeds for resin. If you make polymer clay things, you can make small embeds, you can dry flowers, you can give people ideas and inspiration. I hope that's helped to give you a little idea of some of the things that you can potentially do to help your shop be a little bit trendy for this year. But if you can't pivot and hit the trend, that's okay too. There's plenty of evergreen shops out there that follow their own path and don't follow the trends. But if you have an idea of what's in trend, sometimes that gives you ideas of new things you can try.